Hello there, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with another After Effects tutorial for you to have a go at. Now, uh, those of you that have already seen the tutorial preview, you'll know exactly what's going to happen here. But for those of you who haven't, this is the effect we're after. As always, it just uses the standard toolkit found in After Effects CS3, CS4 or CS5, or even CS5.5 if you're that up to date. And uh, the project file for this will be available for free download from my website at shortformvideo.com. So uh, that's enough chat, let's get started. First thing we've got to do is create a composition and we'll call it Deep Water. As always, I'm using the 720p preset. Um, this time we're looking for a duration of 12 seconds long and I'll just hit OK. First step is to right click in the panel, select New and Solid to create a new solid and we'll call this Background Solid. And click on the color panel and uh, type the following RGB values in. Now we're looking at a value of 4, 25, and 24. And that'll give us a nice dark sea green solid. And just hit OK. Once you've done that, go to your effects and presets panel and find the fractal noise effect. And just drag that onto your solid. Now for once, we're going to leave it at the default settings in the main. But there's just a couple of changes um, I'd like to make before we move on. The first is to create a keyframe for evolution at the beginning of the timeline. Hit the end key on your keyboard to take the timeline indicator to the end and just uh, set the rotation value at 2 times 0 and we'll give it two full revolutions throughout the 12 second duration of our composition. And finally set the blending mode from normal to multiply. Now if we just uh, zoom in so you can see it a little bit more clearly you should have a slowly evolving cloudy effect on your background color. Okay, so that's the background sorted. Next thing to do is create our title text. So create another new composition. And we'll call it Title Comp. Grab your text tool and we'll type in our title text. And I'll just hit Control and Home to center it up. Now, uh, the curious among you will be pleased to know that I'm using uh, Impact, which is a fairly common um, free font, which you should already have installed. It's set to 250 pixels with a line spacing of 213 and obviously a paragraph alignment of centered. Now the color doesn't really matter at this stage. Um, so we can move on to the next step, which is to create another new solid. And we'll call this ripples. Again, color doesn't really matter, but I'll set it to white just for the sake of simplicity. Now before you go any further, move the ripples layer to beneath the deep water layer because that's where it's going to need to be later on. Go to your effects and presets panel and again apply your fractal noise effect to the ripples layer. Now we are going to make some fairly significant changes here. So in your effect controls panel, change the fractal type from basic to strings. Change the noise type from soft linear to spline. Crank the contrast up to about 125 and the complexity down to 1. I'm also going to set the transform properties and scale value down to 68. Create a keyframe at the beginning of the timeline for evolution. Tap end on the keyboard to take your timeline indicator to the end and just set the value to 4 revolutions. Now if I scrub through the timeline you'll see that gives us that slightly bottom of the swimming pool style light effect. Now to apply that effect to the text above, you need to make sure you can see the track mat setting in your uh, panel view. Now if you can't, you're most likely looking at the default view, which you can see here, you can toggle that with the F4 key. So F4 simply uh, swaps between the standard view, which is this one, and the track mat view, which also gives you quick access to all the blending modes. But we're not interested in the blending modes at the moment, we're just interested in the track mat. So twirl down the track mat settings and set it to alpha mat deep water or whatever your text above is called. And instantly you'll see it uses the alpha value of the uh, text above to create a cutout of the layer below, giving us this effect. And just to finish that off, go to your effects and presets panel and find the tritone effect and add it to the bottom of the stack. Set the highlight to 141, 241, 255. Set the mid tones to 21, 143, 147. And we'll set the shadows to 
an almost black 0, 12, and 12. And that's what it looks like, which is pretty good. OK, so back in our deep water composition, you can now bring in your uh, title comp and drop it on top of the background solid. The next step um, is to create the uh, light rays. Now, if you did the uh, deep thought tutorial, you know it's a fairly straightforward thing to do. I'm going to create another new solid. And we'll call it light rays. And just hit OK. Once again, find the fractal noise effect and drag it onto your light ray solid. And in the animation presets, find the curtain animation. Now, a lot of people get caught out by this one because they can't see the animation presets. If you can't see them, there's a little wing menu at the top which uh, just lets you toggle them on and off. So if you can't see them, that's why. Now, if you just tap U, you'll see that we have um, two keyframes created by the curtain preset. Now, it's not actually long enough, so once we get past the five second mark, these light rays are going to freeze, which is not what we want. So, delete the second keyframe, take the timeline indicator to the end, and we'll just set another value of four revolutions, and that'll give us a faster moving curtain effect. Once you've done that, you can go to your effects and presets panel and either find the uh, CC power pin or the straight corner pin effect and drag that on top of the light rays. And we're just going to drag the uh, top left value and the top right value outwards just so it looks like the light rays are pointing downwards, so as though you were looking, looking down into the water um, from the surface watching the title text drift away from you. So in this case, I've gone for minus 460 and uh, 1810. But you can set them pretty much how you like. And finally, um, go to the light rays layer and select blending mode, soft light. And now you can see we've got these uh, light rays looking down. Now, if you're not happy with any of these settings, feel free to experiment and uh, Add your own flavour to it, and let's see uh, what the scale width does. Might give us a slightly wider, so I think I'll take the scale width up to uh, 150, just to widen the, uh, the values out a bit. OK, so it's starting to come together, but obviously the one thing that's missing is the 3D effect on our title comp. So we'll apply that now. Go to your effects and presets panel and find the shatter effect. Now long term users of After Effects will know that the shatter effect can be used quite effectively to create a 3D extrusion. And you do that by applying it to your title comp layer, setting the view to rendered, twirling down the shape properties, changing it from bricks to custom, and then setting the layer you want to extrude as your custom shatter map. So in this case, we're looking at title comp. Now if I just change the camera position, you'll see that's given us a fairly shallow extrude. So I'm just going to take the extrusion depth up to 0.5. And we'll make a few changes. The first thing you absolutely have to do with the shatter effect is uh, turn off some of the forces because otherwise it'll still be the shatter effect and it'll end up looking like this which is absolutely not what we want. So twirl down force number one and set the strength from five to zero. Twirl down physics and set the gravity from three to zero. And that'll just turn off that explosion effect that uh, comes as default with the shatter effect. Next thing we're going to do is twirl down the texture value and set a color value as follows. I think I've written it down here somewhere. OK, so we're looking at RGB 15, 71, and 73. Leave the front mode at layer, but change the side mode to color and the back mode to color. And that will just give us a uh, solid color side and back surface which is a lot, more, uh, a lot more convincing than it was. OK, so making sure the timeline indicator is at the beginning of the timeline, we're going to change a few of the position values. Create an X rotation keyframe at the beginning of the timeline of minus 35, and that'll just tilt it uh, backwards slightly. Go to the 8 second mark and change that value from minus 35 to minus 76, and that'll tilt it even further backwards. 
Now if I tap U to bring up the keyframes, you'll see we've got a default keyframe here. What I'd like to do now is right click on it, go to Keyframe Assistant and select Easy Ease In. Now you can actually use F9 or Shift F9 to achieve the same end, but I found out that actually pauses my uh, screen capture recording utility, which is uh, quite annoying. Back to the beginning of the timeline again, and we're going to create a Z position keyframe. And we'll change it from 2 to 1.3, just to bring it right up to the front of the screen. And again, move to the 8 second mark and change that value from 1.3, probably to 2.7. That should do it. Back to the beginning of the timeline and in Z rotation, set it to 5. Now set it to minus 5. And at the 8 second mark, set it to 5. And about the last thing we want to do here is twill down the lighting properties. Create a keyframe at the beginning of the timeline for light intensity, and we'll set it up to about 1.3. And at the 8 second mark, we'll create another keyframe and set it to 0. And that will just gradually get darker and darker as it drifts off into the distance. Now I'm also going to have this fade out as it gets to the background, so uh, with the title comp layer selected, hit T to bring up the opacity values, and at the 8 second mark, create an opacity value of 0. Hold down Shift and tap Page Up twice to advance backwards by 20 frames, and we'll set that opacity value to 100. That'll give us a 20 frame fade out. So there's a couple of things still to do. The first of which is uh, fairly straightforward. Create a new solid, and we'll call this vignette, and we'll make it black, and just hit OK. With the vignettes layer selected, get your ellipse tool, and we'll just drag an ellipse that looks a little bit like that shape over the top. Set it from Add to Subtract. Tap F to bring up the feather values. And we'll just uh, feather it by about 96 pixels. Tap M twice to bring up the uh, full properties. And we'll set the mask expansion right down to about minus 161. And we'll take the opacity down as well to about 85%. Now again, we're going to create a keyframe at the 8 second mark for mask expansion. And then at the 12 second mark, we're going to reduce the expansion even further so it closes off all the light rays. So in this case, we're looking at minus 620. Now, uh, you'll notice that it's a little bit steppy and choppy on the uh, the text, but because we're underwater, that's not a problem. Find your fast blur effect and add that to your title comp layer. And we'll create a keyframe of five at the beginning of the timeline. And back at the eight second mark, we're going to increase the blurriness to 12. So as the text drifts back, it gets blurrier and blurrier and blurrier and eventually fades out entirely. A final step, just to wrap it all off, we're going to create another new solid. I'm going to use the eyedropper to pick out a pale blue tone from the title background, and we'll call it Bubbles. And we'll hit OK. Find the CC Bubbles layer, uh, sorry, the CC Bubbles effect, and add that to your Bubbles layer. Now the default settings for Bubbles um, give you this rather cheesy effect. It looks more like bath time giggles rather than a suspenseful horror movie, which is the look we're after. So uh, we're just going to dumb it down a little bit. We don't want so many bubbles, so I'll take it down to 50. And uh, we'll take the bubble size down to 2. In fact, we'll take it right down to 1, in fact. I'm also going to add fast blur to it and set it to 5. 
and we'll just uh, blur them off a little bit. Now the problem with this effect is that um, the bubbles are actually rising vertically. So I think I might blur them even more. Let's go for 8, possibly even 10. So the way we fix that is to set the bubbles layer to a 3D layer. Hit R to bring up the rotation properties. I'm going to rotate it on the X value to minus 45. Tap the S key to bring up the scale properties and just increase the scale to about 150 and then nudge the whole layer down until the bounding box that you can see around is on the outside of the frame because we don't want bubbles um, appearing from nowhere and cutting off. So uh, last thing to do is tap T. We'll take the opacity value for that down to 75 and we'll also drop it underneath the vignette. Okay, I think the contrast on our title comp is a little bit too high, so I might just uh, pop into the original composition and take the fractal noise value down to 100. So there you have it, the final article. Um, it's probably not quite as good as the original version, but uh, don't worry, if you'd like to get the, the original version, it's available from my website at shortformvideo.com for free. Um, as always, I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.